السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to another episode of the Gems of the Heart where the heart's been the most important organ in our life that the foundation of al-Iman and faith is in the hearts the foundation of all goodness in the hearts the diseases in the hearts is the most dangerous everything basically goes down to the heart and if the heart is sound and good, everything else will be sound and good. And if the heart is corrupted, everything else will be corrupted. So that's why it's very important for us to give attention to our hearts. And since the heart is not seen uh, from the outside appearance of a person, that means we need extra knowledge to know how to deal with our hearts. It's not something that we can refer to our own intellect or our own abilities. We need to refer to the creator of the hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created us. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that created the hearts. And he's the one that these hearts are under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the only way for these hearts to be upon what is right and to be guided and to be purified is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified it and guided it and make it upright. So the matter is from Allah. That's why we have to have the knowledge of how to purify it by the will of Allah. And we have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to purify our hearts. And this is definitely something that, you know, with these two forms of power, these two ways of purifying our hearts, a person by the will of Allah will have a pure heart, will have a heart that is tranquil, a heart that is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a heart that will be successful in this life and in the hereafter. The fact that a person knows how to take the steps and the means to purify the hearts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely since the matter at the end is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's the one that guides the hearts. And we know that the purest heart ever is the heart of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified him fully, perfectly. He's in the highest level of Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him the example and the role model for each and every one of us. And he kept his sunnah, his way to be alive till the day of judgment. Everything is saved for us to know the way of the Prophet sallallahu and his speech and his actions and what's in his heart and so on. So therefore we have to imitate the way of the Prophet والسلام, and to humble ourselves to purify our hearts which the way, the way of the Prophet sallallahu the Sunnah way, the way the Prophet ﷺ, not to invent our own ways and so on. We've been going through the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a way to purify our hearts and as a way to make our hearts upright. These hearts have no goodness in it unless they get to know the creator of these hearts, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We talked about many of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in this episode, inshallah wa ta'ala, we'll talk briefly but one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Al-Muhsin. The name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Muhsin. And Al-Muhsin, you probably heard the like of this word if you do not understand uh, Arabic, it's not your language. You would hear it from Al-Ihsan, for example. And Al-Ihsan is the good doing. And as we know, and as we heard many times before, that the levels of this deen, the level of this religion, as it's mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel السلام, when he came to the Prophet ﷺ in the form of a man, and he asked him about al-Islam, asked him about al-Iman, asked him about al-Ihsan. So these are the three levels of the religion. The highest level is the level of al-Ihsan. <coughs> the most spacious one, the level of al-Islam. Then the person elevate himself to be in the level of al-Iman. And the highest level, the level of al-Ihsan, the good doing and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the fact in this life then you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowingly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you but when we talk about this being the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the names of Allah al-Muhsin some of the ulama they might say for example there is no evidence or this is not one of the names of Allah but the authentic opinion is that this is one of the names of Allah even though it's not mentioned clearly in the Qur'an that this is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it's mentioned in some of the narrations of the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, because as we know that the, the way for us to know the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is by the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet It's not by anyone but uh, the w the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the, w the 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 Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet One of these evidences in the Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ reported by Imam Al Tabarani, and it's a sound narration that the Prophet ﷺ he said, "Ida hakamtum fa'adilu." If you make a judgment, if you are a judge, then be just. Fa'adilu. This is in the context of hukm or the context of giving a verdict. Different than bringing peace between two parties, you don't deal with it with the exact justice, but rather you would try to get people to forgive one another, to pardon one another. But if you're in the context of being a judge, then be just. وَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُوا And if you had to slaughter something, to kill something, then be good. فَأَحْسِنُوا Do it with goodness. Usually goodness comes in, in something that is good. You know, uh, but not in killing. You know, if a person, for example, is killing uh, a chicken or killing a cow or whatever there is, do it with goodness. And that's why there are etiquettes to do it in such a way, not to bring so much pain for the animal and so on. Uh, and the like of this in general, even in the capital punishments and so on, not to do it in a harsh way. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُحْسِنٌ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Because indeed, as the Prophet ﷺ said, because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala muhsin. Muhsin, that means he's, you know, he's, he's the ultimate good. يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ He loves those who are muhsinin, those who are good doers. So this is stating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhsin. And this is an authentic hadith authenticated by the ulama like Sheikh al-Bani and others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, muhsin meaning that he subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that has the ultimate goodness in everything. And this is something that we, uh, when we expand on this and we look at things and, and the effect of believing in this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would see this ihsan and this goodness in everything. So first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having you know having this uh, name with this attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala katab al-ihsan fi kulli shay he made al-ihsan in everything there's goodness in everything everything has been created in the most perfect way to what has been created for so everything is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill its, its job the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's created it for so the human being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so therefore he gave him the willingness whether to obey or disobey. He gave him the intellect, he gave him the reason, he gave him the ways to understand things. Fashion the human beings in such a perfect way that the person will be able to fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to choose otherwise in the most perfect way. So the creation of the human beings is not according to what we desire, it's according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for. And that's something that shows how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhsin meaning that he is the good doing subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation of the human beings in the creation of everything and we can go on and on with this the creation of the heavens and the earth the creation of the animals the creation of the angels the creation of everyone and this is something that a person should witness that in the uh, name and attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of matter or subject of al-ihsan the same thing when a person looks into you know, from the very beginning of the creation of the human being, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and how our creation is about and how the human beings are created from nothing and then they're created in such a way that is keep on repeated from one uh, individual to the other in such a way and then the way that we, our upbringing, you know, and that's, it's really a call for us to always reflect. We have to reflect upon everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that would lead us to more and more strength in matters of Al-Iman. When we look at the, the age or the time that we spend on the face of earth, before a person is responsible for their actions, we know that what makes a person responsible for their actions, that means they will be judged in the Day of Judgment, whether to enter Jannah or the Hellfire, once they reach the age of puberty. Before that, the human being is not responsible for their actions. If they die before that, you know, there is no responsibility as far as why did you commit the sin or so. They're before the age of a taklif, before the age of being responsible and held accountable for their actions in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And usually this age of puberty is around the age of 15 less or so. So there are many, many years 
that the human beings are being prepared for this major responsibility, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth for. So that's why you would find the, the, the childhood for the human beings, it's the longest. It's a very, you know, many, many years preparing this human being intellectually and physically to face the most important thing ever, and that is to choose to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's why it's very important for the upbringing of the human beings and how the human beings, when they go back and they reflect upon this, and they would see the ihsan and the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how He created them. And that's something that is we are ordered in the Quran. We are ordered in the Quran how and to look into how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that this is one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a person looks at his life, each and every one of us, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected us and bestowed his goodness upon us from the very, very beginning. From the person when he was in the womb of his mother and who's the one that took care of that child when he was in the womb of the mother? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who's the one that provided for him and gave him the nutrition that he needs? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fashioned him in such a way, created him from one stage to the other, that it's repeated from one individual to the other. This is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person is born, who's the one that put the love in the hearts of the mothers so that they would take care of their children or whoever they are caretakers of those who are born? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And raising the human being one day after the other. And the stages that a person goes in in his life and the beginning of that stages, it's time that we do not remember something that is meant to be this way. So that the human beings, they humble themselves. They look back and they say, there's a stage in our life, we don't even remember what, what was in it. Why? Because we were under the protection of Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will for the person to be ruined, nobody can protect himself. And we were under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the same way it continues to be. And then after that, the ability to sit and then the ability to walk and the intellectual abilities that come day after another and learning things you know, slowly one day after the other. It's amazing how the human beings and the life of the human beings that it's meant to be this way for people again. Once they are given the ability to think and to be, different, be able to differentiate between the truth and falsehood, they should humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the muhsin, the one that bestowed his favors upon them. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very first words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that were revealed to the Prophet in Surah Al-Alaq mentions this fact. اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقْ اِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمْ الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمْ عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطَغَى أَرَّأَهُ اسْتَغْنَى The stages of the creation of the human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the human beings from the very first words that were revealed to the Prophet sallam, The one that in the name of the one that created you, created you from alaq, from a dirty drop, from you know, describing the, the nature of these stages of the embryo and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And uh, reminding the human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things and He created us and He's the one that gave us knowledge. He gave the knowledge to the human beings what the human beings didn't know. We did not bring this knowledge of how to do things in this life from our own selves. This is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is all signs of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhsin. But then after all of this, uh, you see how the human beings, they are ignorant. That nay, indeed the human beings transgress after knowing these facts and after seeing the ihsan <coughs> and the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the human beings, they transgress. Why? When the human being sees himself, so he feels that he is in no need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He thinks that he does not need the creator of the heavens and earth. Many people on the face of earth, this is their reality. They live their life, they eat from the provisions from Allah, they breathe the air that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for them. They forget about how they were born and raised and so on. They think that they do not need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is all foolishness and arrogance. And that's why when, when the benefits of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His names and attributes, that the believers are not like this, but rather they humble themselves. And that's one of the things that is required as a result of believing in these names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and the benefits of it it's something that definitely we need to learn and to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to these names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the word again al-muhsin and comes from it al-ihsan the goodness and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, uh, the Prophet as the hadith also of Shaddad ibn Aws radiallahu anhu that he said and this is also reported by Imam al-Tabarani rahimahullah he said hafizhtu min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ithnatayn that means I memorized I learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam two things with the first one inna Allah muhsinun yuhibbu al-ihsan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhsin and he love al-ihsan and that's the outcome of having that belief the belief and then what how that it affect us as human beings and he said and he said فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقِتْلَةِ the same meaning of the previous hadith if you kill then make it with goodness وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الذَّبْحَ and if you slaughter then do it with goodness and uh, the Prophet ﷺ even mentioned in more details and specific matters وَلْيُحِدَّ أَحَدُكُمْ شَفْرَتَهُ ثُمَّ الْيُرِحْ ذَبِحَتَهُ that means let one of you whenever if you're slaughtering the animal to make your knife sharp so that you don't hurt the animal or cause it to be in so much pain and uh, to make it easy and to make their the biha or the animal that is being slaughtered at ease and if you know when people do not follow the lights of the revelation from Allah they think that this is a cruelty for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created these animals for that purpose so they are fulfilling the purpose of their life but with the condition that people would say Bismillah the name of Allah and they would do it in the right way as the Prophet ﷺ said with goodness otherwise they are the ones that are abusing these animals without the right to do so so um, when we also as the Ramad, they talked about Al-Ihsan or the goodness comes with the meaning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his favor uh, upon others and to adorn things subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, to um, basically in actions to have the goodness in actions and these three things are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so bestowing goodness upon people upon others as we heard an example of that of the human beings and the fact that this is endless because it's with every breath we take and uh, the bestowing the favors upon others not just in the physical aspect of things but also to be guided to be guided to the truth such a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of all favors is for the person to be among the people of the truth to be guided to be obedient to Allah to uh, fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is all from the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he bestows upon the people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhsin so this is when it comes to bestowing his favor upon others adorning things and that's also part of the ihsan adorning the creation of Allah it's all adorned according to why it's been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see the heavens the earth the human beings the different creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of that is for the purpose of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it for and also when it comes to the actions of Allah the actions of Allah is all based on Al-Ihsan and goodness and the evil actions that happens on the face of earth from the human beings and, and even tornadoes and earthquakes and the like of that it's to serve the purpose of this life is for people to be tested is for people to be patient with the orders of Allah to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone to humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is great meanings and great acts of worship and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in his actions he's the most perfect subhanahu wa ta'ala and the struggle that people go through in this life it's meant to be this way and the outcome of their actions in the hereafter as we know is either Jannah or the Hawfayr perfect and with the fact that nobody will be punished unless they have been given fully the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا we are not going to punish till we send a messenger so messengers are being sent the uh, final messenger is Muhammad sallallahu that's why the message has been preserved there's no need for another messenger to come because the final message has been the most comprehensive and it's preserved till the day of judgment for people to see for themselves the miraculous nature of it for the truth to be made clear for the people and that's part of the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether it's in the matters of religion and revelation from Allah or the universal actions of Allah that we see around us that human beings if they are away from the revelation from Allah they're confused they do not know exactly 
you know, why things are and so on. But when they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes and everything is upon this goodness and upon this al-ihsan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin. And uh, when we talk about the human beings, this is something else. This is the benefit of learning this. And the actions of the human beings, it definitely has to be upon al-ihsan because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, al-muhsin. And uh, the going back to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this name and this attribute from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the believers how they uh, they should uh, feel this this meaning in themselves and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example mentioned such a, a beautiful verse in Surah Yusuf when a person is, is saved from disbelief and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him he should witness this ihsan, this goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a person is saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to repent from a sin, he fell into the trap of the shaitan and he committed a sin. He became trapped into his own desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him and guided him and made him repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something that the believers should witness the ihsan from Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhsin. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his goodness upon that individual to save him. And we can go on and on with this. The same thing if a person is saved from trouble in this life, from uh, you know, being hit by a car or you know, being in such a difficult situation, whatever there is, it's all by the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was mentioning and talking about the favors of Allah, even though Yusuf alayhi salam, he was taken away from his parents, those who loved him dearly when he was young, and he was thrown into a well in the darkness you know, of the well and the darkness of the night and so on. And he's a young child. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. And how he was raised away from his parents. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared him, prepared him to be what we know about Yusuf alayhi salam. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end after he forgave his brothers after these long years being away from his father and and all of the sadness that they went through and all of the different trials that he went through with the wife of Al-Aziz and being in, in jail even for years. You know, all of that a person might see it as life of struggle after struggle. But all of that, Yusuf alayhi salam at the end when he was grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was well established on the face of earth and he said, Rabbi qad atayti min al-mulk wa'allamtani min ta'wil al-hadith and so on, Allah, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you gave me the kingdom and you made me learn the interpretation of the dreams and so on. But then he said afterwards, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ When he was talking to his parents and he was talking to his brothers and that he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَحْسَنَ بِي أَحْسَنَ from Al-Ihsan that Allah bestowed his goodness upon me when he took me out of prison. So he's, he did not talk about when he was thrown into the well. He did not say that he was uh, put into the prison. You know, some people that are negative and they only remember the trials that they go through. And this is in the context when, you know, he raised his parents by the throne and they all bestowed unto him and the dream became true. And as you see in the verse, he said, وَقَدَ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ وَبَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي Such an amazing statement that shows the perfect manners and the perfect generosity and goodness and he that's why he was the kareem the most generous uh, the son of the generous and so on that allah he said وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي Allah bestowed his favor upon me when he took me out of the prison see the the Quran is teaching us even how to live our life believing in this name of Allah we need to really reflect upon this uh, position and this verse in Surah Yusuf but we'll go to break inshallah ta'ala and come back to the same spot, to the incident of Yusuf alayhi salam and how he used this word Ahsanabi, that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon him and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon us and have goodness upon us. And we need to witness that, we need to see that. We need to be firm upon this because this is how a person brings all kinds of goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll be right back, so stay with us inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah, welcome back. And we're talking about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Muhsin, 
the goodness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the bestower of all goodness and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala with his actions with his favors upon the human beings and all of these goodness is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we were talking about how Yusuf alayhi salam when he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembered the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the surah after a life of struggle and he went through difficult things and uh, things that people might, you know, they talk about it all their life. Sometimes people, they just faced one uh, difficult situation in their life. They keep on talking about it and they keep on bringing it and remembering it and make them miserable throughout their entire life. And they forget about the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how that these difficult times, it purifies the person. It brings all kinds of goodness to the person. And the best goodness whatsoever is for the person to be obedient to Allah and his messenger sallam and to be patient. So we were talking about the verses in Surah Yusuf and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Yusuf alayhi salam when he, uh, his parents came to him and he was well established and the interpretation of his dream was made clear and true that when they prostrated to him and then he said وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي and this is what the, the place where we need to reflect upon that he said that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon me and did the goodness to me. إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْدِ He mentioned about him being brought out of the prison. Who's the one that brought him out of the prison? Yusuf alayhi salam is saying, when Allah brought me out from the prison. This is what he remembers. This is the goodness that he remembers. And this is how we should be affected by this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin. وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدُ and he brought and he brought you and you make you come from al Bedu, from the Bedouin's life, talking to his parents and his brothers. When he talked about something negative, he referred it to himself. He said, after the shaytan nazag and he intervened between me and my brothers, he started with himself. He did not say after my brothers did what they did to me. He did not do any good, any any evil. But they're the ones that did evil and they did such an evil act by throwing their brother in a well. But see how Yusuf السلام, he did not remind them in this context of their evil actions. He forgave them. And this is the goodness of forgive, or forgiveness. You know, this is a safh al jameel. This is to pardon someone in a beautiful way, not to remind them of their uh, wrongdoing. And rather putting himself with them in the same context. من بعد أن نزغ الشيطان بيني وبين إخوتي. After the shaytan intervened between me and my brothers. Anybody that would listen to that statement, he doesn't take from it that his brothers did any wrongdoing, because this was in a context of uh, forgiveness and pardoning and so on. And how that you know this is to show the favors of Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, upon Yusuf alayhi salam. Such a beautiful verse. And something that we should take from this and as a benefit of knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin, is the one that bestowed his goodness upon the people, is to always speak like this. Some people, their, their life is about complaining and they keep on complaining and it doesn't do anything goodness to them but it keeps on being in such a miserable state and it brings all kinds of sicknesses and diseases and so on and so forth. But rather, the believers should always look at what is good should learn from their mistakes, yes, should put things in the right perspective, but always have that hope for the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things to bring the tranquility in the heart because if the hearts are not tranquil, that means it's always miserable and always terrified and things like this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the ways of the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He bestows this sakina and this tranquility to the hearts of the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran. And he's the one that anzal as fi qulubi mu'minin. He's the one that brought down the tranquility in the hearts of the believers. And this is one of the deputies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look at this ihsan and this goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after looking at the physical aspects of things, we need to really see the, 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 the different types of al-ihsan as the ulama, they mentioned them with regards to the human beings. One of which is for a person to be guided to the deen of Islam, to be guided to this light, to be guided to the Quran. There's nothing more goodness than this. And that's why this is part of believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin. 
that when a person is guided to the deen of Islam, to make a person from among the ummah of the Prophet the best nation ever brought to mankind, and they enjoy the good and forbid the evil, and they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to, be st to witness this, to witness that goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person is among those who memorize the words of Allah, have the knowledge of the deen of Islam, to realize this and to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala and the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this. And there is nothing more rejoicing for the believers than to get to know the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy, let them rejoice. It's better than all of what they amass. This is the ihsan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after memorization, to have the knowledge of the, the, of the deen of Allah, the knowledge of the Qur'an, elevating oneself in the levels of knowledge. And all of that is when a person take the means to be among the good doers. This is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to, uh, to be guided to act according to these bounties and the mercy of Allah as we hear, as we see that what makes them rejoice is the fadl of Allah, the bounty of Allah and His mercy. The believers, they are rejoicing over this more than the, the wealth of this world. Why? Because that's what stays forever. And that's why this is one of the benefits of learning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Muhsin, is that we see the real ihsan. The real ihsan and the real goodness is when a person is guided to the deen of Islam, when a person is guided to do what is good, guided to be away from what is evil, to be guided to memorize the Qur'an, learn the Qur'an, learn the knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is nothing is, is more valuable than this. The Prophet والسلام, when he went to the people of a Sufa, and we heard that before probably many times, and there are the poor people staying at the back of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. They were very poor, that some of them would even sometimes fall uh, as a result of extreme hunger. hunger. And some of them would not have enough uh, clothing to cover their awrah and what needs to be covered in the salah. So they were in dire need. And the Prophet ﷺ would go to them and he would say, who among you would love to go to the Wadi Al-Aqiq outside of Medina, not too far, and to come back with two of the most valuable camels without any severing to their relationship with the kin and kith and without doing anything haram. You become all of a sudden in such a assured uh, you know, um, walk that you become among the richest people basically uh, who would among you would love to do that and they would all say we all love to do that a prophet of Allah so the prophet ﷺ would say to them for one of you to learn two verses of the book of Allah is better than the most precious two camels and three is better than three and four is better than four and so on one verse two verses of the Quran this is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how the Qur'an changes the perspective of the human beings and the believers. And, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that when a person uh, sees that, you know, when it comes to the physical ability to be guided in such a way with matters of knowledge and to, uh, to, to be able to, to, to seek the provisions from Allah, to even to have the ability to be kind to others. Not everybody has these abilities. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if a person keep on going with more and more of the favors of Allah, they're endless. You know, if, if you hear a hadith of the Prophet sallam, that dunya mata' wa khayru mata'iha, mar'a salihah, this, this world is an enjoyment. And the most, or the most enjoyable thing is the righteous woman. To have a righteous wife, for example, that's a great favor from Allah. And if a person doesn't, and he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are also means and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test his creation the way he will subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the person to be always you know acknowledging the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he, when he when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the person the ability to be patient facing something difficult in his life that's a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the person to witness and uh, the same thing with one's health with one's ability uh, to you know fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all of that you know, and this is just an example of some of the things that we need to be upon and witnessing in our life to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being an muhsin. But then when we look into ourselves, and of course this is mentioned also before, but more into what do we need to do in our personal actions 
as a result of believing in this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Muhsin is basically what is how much of that we have in ourselves uh, to have this ihsan and this goodness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the level of al-ihsan to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the level of goodness as the Prophet sallam said and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara fa'in lan takun tarahu fa'innahu yarak that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Allah so in your actions and your act of worship you know when we stand in the salah are we standing in the salah as if we are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how would be one's salah if he is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally different in khushu' humbleness in the love of Allah and so on and the other level if you don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fact that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you so the level of khushu' and humbleness and so on this al-ihsan in all of our actions not just in salah to see that when a person is giving charity when a person is talking to his wife or wife talking to her husband or raising our children or buying and selling in anything that we do witnessing this this is part of living our life according to believing in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as al-muhsin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran to have this ihsan and to this goodness as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in surah al-qasas with regards to uh, the cousin of Musa alayhi salam Qarun uh, when he was ordered wa bitaghi fi ma ataka Allah ad-dar al-akhira wa la tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya wa ahsin kama ahsana Allah ilayk wa la tabghi al-fasada fi al-ard and so on which means he was told wa bitaghi fi ma ataka Allah ad-dar al-akhira seek from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon you so seek from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the hereafter and the other order wala tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya and do not forget your share in this dunya there's no harm if you want to enjoy your life in the permissible way and that's the balance in the life of the believers and that's the benefit of the knowledge this is what the people of knowledge told them wala tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya don't forget your share in this dunya. That means you can enjoy the enjoyments of this life in the permissible way. Then the point that is mentioned here, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ أَحْسِنْ That's the order of Al-Ihsan. Be, do good. Be upon good. The same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed goodness upon you. He's the one that gave you this life and health and all of this wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Qarun that the strong of men are not able to even carry the keys of it and وَلَا تَبَقِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ and do not seek corruption on the face of earth by your wealth, by your health that's many people, they use their wealth to spread corruption on the earth to spread sins to uh, call people to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on instead of being grateful to Allah the one that bestowed his favor upon him with his wealth and that's why as, a, as, as one of the signs of a person believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-muhsin and that all goodness come from Allah wa ahsin kama ahsan Allah ilayk to remember this ahsin kama ahsan Allah ilayk since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin the one that bestows goodness upon you then you be good you need to be good as a result of this and this is the effect of believing in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is uh, how to be muhsin, how to be goodness, in, upon goodness, if you want to be a good person, to, as mentioned also in the verse, seeking rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Make your uh, actions based on al-ikhlas, sincerity, purity. Because the muhsin, the, the good doer, is not just the one that gives people money, for example, but the one that deals with people with sincerity. He does not need anything from them in return. He wants his rewards fully from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His goodness is coming one way without any condition. Because sometimes people would do goodness to others, but they, it's conditioned with goodness coming from the people. And if the people would treat them bad, for example, they would quit being good to them. And of course, this is not the ultimate goodness that a person should be upon. And to remember the hereafter and to follow the way the Prophet ﷺ. And the same thing when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if a person wants to be upon this ihsan and goodness, is to perfect our ibadah. To perfect the way that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And this is something, a subject that we need to really reflect upon. How is our salah? How is our dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembrance of Allah? How is our ilm, knowledge? You know, it's very easy now to, to hear subjects of knowledge, even to speak. And as Ibn Sirin rahimahullah, he said that al-ilm or knowledge uh, used to be in the hearts. Can al-ilm fil qulub? The knowledge used to be in the hearts. That means, and this is what we're talking about, the hearts. The knowledge affected the hearts, made them have more fear of Allah, humbled themselves to Allah, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And then he said, Wal-an, meaning now, he's talking about his generation, fithiyab in the outside appearance, meaning we can hear lectures and lectures and so on outside. It's definitely, that's definitely something very important. We have to listen to the people of knowledge and so on. But what's the effect of this knowledge in our hearts, in our lives? How is it affecting us? How is it affecting our ibadah? And you know, sometimes people, they take lectures and so on as a goal in itself. And nothing changes in their life. They get to have more information, more knowledge in the sense of information. But there's no effect to their ibadah, to their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to their salah, going early for the salah, making sure that the person is behind the imam when the imam says Allahu Akbar. Having that khushu' and the humbleness in the salah, not to turn with one's heart away in the salah, but focusing in the salah, uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this ihsan, with this goodness, and the remembrance of Allah and the obedience of Allah and being away from haram and so on. The same thing with وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ as we heard, to seek halal ways of provisions because we are tested in this life. And if a person really believes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin, Allah bestowed his favor upon you. If he gave you the means to seek provisions from Allah, that means you can seek what is halal. Seek what is halal even if it's little. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless it for you. He did not give you the ability, this, the physical abilities, the intellectual abilities to spread corruption on the face of earth, to seek haram provisions, but rather he wants you to seek only what is halal, what is permissible. And that's a sign that a person, he believes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin, is the one that is the good doers of things. And uh, this is the level again of al-ihsan. The Prophet said that to the companions of the Allah anhum, that he ordered them that they fear Allah as if they see Allah. And if they don't see, they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing them. And that's basically the, the level of al-ihsan that needs to be there. And uh, to be patient. It's, there's so many things. And if we go through the verses in the Quran, the hadith of the Prophet if we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuhibbu al-muhsineen, Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the good doers, as we heard in the hadith. So if you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-muhsin, then be among the muhsineen, be among the good doers. Not just to others, but to yourself and others and so on. But there is something with this. How can a person be a muhsin, a good doer? It has to be upon patience. Because people in this life, they will take you away or they would try their best to take you away from being muhsin. Because people in our life are challenges. Shaitan will try to take you away from being muhsin. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in uh, Surah Hud, Wasbir, fa inna Allah la yudi'u ajr al muhsinin. Wasbir, be patient. Because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not render in vain the rewards of the muhsinin, the good doers. So be patient, being in the state of al ihsan. Be patient, that means. Uh, what, this, what does take the person away is that people want to be in haste with their own desires. They don't want to be patient. They just want to fulfill their desires. So they won't be muhsineen. They won't be good doers. Right? And that's why the person should be patient. And to be patient with the obedience to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, To obey the Messenger to, to follow the ways of the Prophet وسلم. The best of all of the human beings in good doing is the Prophet how did he act? How did he do things? This is what we need to work on ourselves and to be patient. And that comes with it to struggle with our own selves. And if we go through another verse in the Quran that talks about the muhsineen here, we heard wasbir, be patient. In more details, it talks about the muhsineen in Surah Al-Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْدَرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِ مِنَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَفِيَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ if you want to really fulfill that belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-muhsin, the one that bestows all kinds of goodness, be yourself among the muhsineen, be among the good doers. 
those who would spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, times of ease or times of difficulties and those who would suppress their anger. So that needs a lot of patience, that requires a lot of patience. Especially that if you're able to go on with your anger and you can, you know, hit someone, for example, nobody will get you in trouble, they're not going to arrest you for that, whatever. You know, to suppress your anger for the sake of Allah. And to pardon people, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who pardon people, meaning that people wronged them, they did something wrong to them, and they are pardoning them, they are forgiving them. That's a very high level of goodness. It needs a lot of patience. Most people, they fail in this. But then remember, you want to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-muhsin. And you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you and to pardon you. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love the good doers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the muhsineen, among those who are good doers. And to make us have the proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes and to bestow his favor upon us to purify our hearts by following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So till next time, and with another name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attribute, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds and to bestow his favor upon us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.